Ed Roberts had come to uh, speak to the Partners in Policy Making um, group. And if you don't know who Partners in Policies are, is, or what the group is, you need to go to the Governor's Planning Council for People with Disabilities website and find out because it, is, it will change your life. Um, it changed my life. Found this application for Partners in Policy Making in my mailbox where I lived in a segregated apartment complex, which was another story, but um, I went through partners and the first year I was almost overwhelmed at how much there was that needed to be changed. And the fact that there were actual laws and rules for these things. I mean, and you know, that I had been, I felt, you know, that all my rights had been violated and I had no idea. Um, that's what partners did for me, changed my life in 1992. So in 93, I went back to partners and um, assisted them as a conference assistant. Um, just helping people not to be so overwhelmed and, you know, explaining things, you know, after um, after a certain person had talked and they were like, what are they talking about? And they had an acronym suit. Um, and in the second year, a man named Ed Roberts, who started the Independent Living Center, the Independent Living Movement in the country, it he he started out in, in Berkeley in California and he I mean it does it might sound simple but Ed uh, used a respirator and was paralyzed from polio um, and at the age of 14 was put on an iron lung well then they developed a, a portable uh, ventilator so he, California is very uh, much more liberal, liberal, we'll say, uh, uh, and they let Ed Roberts go to school. They let, Ed, yes, they let him go to school. Um, and he uh, got a degree and got, they got his master's, all of which vocational rehabilitation paid for. And ended up being the, the director of, of what, what we call uh, uh, DDARS. I don't like to use acronyms. Uh, the, he was the director of all voc rehab services in California, which was phenomenal. He said the first day that he came to work, he went to work, he was on an elevator. And there were two other, there were two other employees on the uh, elevator with him, and he, he didn't say anything. And one of the uh, temporarily able-bodied employees said to his uh, coworker, "said Did you hear they hired a, a cripple to be our boss?" And the other one said, "Yeah, we'll see how long this lasts." And uh, they went up to their floor, and Ed didn't say anything at that time. But when they got to their floor, uh, they, of course, being polite to the cripple with the respirator, um, he, they let him out first. And then he turned around, turned his chair around to them, and he goes, um, it's been r nice riding with you guys. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm, I'm Ed Roberts. I'm the new director and turned around and went on. And that pretty much sums up, well, no, that doesn't sum up. Ed was not afraid to do anything. Uh, he, I mean anything. Um, I've seen video of him when he swam with whales. Swam with whales, was it whales or dolphins? In the ocean. He has a respirator. 
I didn't like it when I got baptized and they put me underwater in a swimming pool. Okay, I'm, I'm done now. I'm wet. I'm good. I'm good. It just felt like a very long time because you have no control over that. I was so, you know, inspired by Ed and I was excited and I had uh, the opportunity to go through extra ADA training uh, and I wanted to be an ADA consultant when I grew up. Um, you know. Um, anyway, so um, they, you know, they, the, somebody that worked at the Independent Living Center here, here in town in Indianapolis, um, wanted you know, Ed to come out and see where I live because I lived in a segregated apartment complex, which is really really bad and means. That you know, everybody with disabilities is sitting in the same place. And if you don't have a job, if you don't have anything going on in your life, uh, it, you you make up stuff and you get caught up in all kinds of things that are usually um, unhealthy, really fun, but unhealthy. And so I was real psyched up. Ed Roberts is coming over to my place and like yeah it's, you know I can say and I got pictures of us together and then I noticed he wasn't there because there's a, a real presence with someone with a respirator because it makes noise um, and they said well he's out he's out on the back patio so I went on the, uh, had somebody go out uh, go through my apartment with me and and open up the door and there's Ed Roberts and his attendant and a couple of my friends smoking a joint where they uh, a joint of uh, yeah a, a real joint good stuff that that I had tried to give up at that that I had given up at that point uh, and all, all I could think of was this guy's got a ventilator that somebody's covering up the vent hole so he can inhale on uh, marijuana now I love marijuana as much as any other marijuana smoking smoking well no not uh, anyway apparently Ed loved it more than than I did because I thought anybody that smoked and was a quadriplegic was crazy because you can't breathe hardly any way and I just was a nervous wreck uh, I don't know what bothered me about that because he was having a real good time because he came out front then on the patio and he had a fog fog light uh, like a headlight down between his um, legs well underneath his seat and he flipped on the fog light and had this horn thing going and he just started doing donuts and I'm thinking okay he's gonna overdose he's gonna overdose I'm dying he's gonna die I'm gonna be known as the play the person that killed Ed Roberts and that uh, that's not what happened because I mean, Ed just died of natural causes. Uh, but he lived more of a, full, of a full life than anybody that I have ever heard of or seen. 